Why are, why are you out running 4.30, 5 o'clock in the morning and not later in the day? Or Why do fighters do that? Because I don't want to do it. I mean, it's, if the discipline is to do things that you don't want to do. Believe it or not, the easy part about fighting is fighting. No one wants to get up at 4 and run when it's pitch dark. It has to be done. And the only reason I do it so early is because I believe that the, the other guy isn't doing it. And that, it gives me a little edge. It's common knowledge that Iron Mike Tyson brought an elite champion's mindset to the boxing world, which played an instrumental part in him picking up his first title at just 20 years old. But in this video, I want to truly peel back the layers of the legendary fighter to dissect the principles he lived by and applied to his training, and truly discover what shaped his domination over the heavyweight division in the late 80s and late 90s. The dedication to training, particularly the 4am runs, can unsurprisingly be linked back to his mentor and trainer, Cus D'Amato. In his book, The Cus D'Amato Mind, he states, determining why you should perform a certain act, i.e. going for runs early in the morning, going to the gym when you feel tired or frustrated, will allow you to separate emotions from logic. It is easier to get up early in the morning for a run when you shift your focus from how you feel about doing it to understand that it needs to be done regardless of how you feel. Now this may seem like slightly trivial basic advice that any old sports coach would give their student, but the basic principle behind it is steeped in history, drawn from perhaps the greatest philosopher who ever lived. Between 166 and 180 AD, an ancient pandemic known as the Antonine Plague decimated the Roman Empire. Roman historians describe the legions being devastated and entire towns and villages being depopulated and going to ruin. Rome itself was particularly badly affected, with carts leaving the city each day piled high with dead bodies. In the middle of this plague, Marcus Aurelius, the then emperor, wrote a book known as The Meditations, which recorded the moral and psychological advice he gave himself at this time. He frequently applies Stoic philosophy to the challenges of coping with pain, illness, anxiety and loss. When examining the text, parallels begin to be drawn between his own philosophy and those principles reiterated by Dermato himself. Marcus Aurelius wrote, in the morning, when you rise unwillingly, let this thought be present. I am rising to the work of a human being. Why then am I dissatisfied if I am going to do the things for which I exist and for which I was brought into the world? Or have I been made for this, to lie in my bedclothes and keep myself warm? But this is more pleasant. Do you exist then to take pleasure and not at all for action or exertion? In Cus's book, a chapter is dedicated to how he enabled fighters to cope with fear and anxiety before bouts took place. Boxers frequently experienced the obvious realisation that stepping into the ring could lead to a loss or a health risk, and D'Amato would point to the especially large degree of fear felt on the day of a fight. He argued, whilst waiting for the match time to start, you have a very small degree of control over the situation. One of the cornerstones of Stoicism is that our true good resides in our own character and actions, distinguishing between what's up to us and what isn't. Modern Stoics tend to call this the dichotomy of control, and many people find this distinction alone helpful in alleviating stress. What happens to me is never directly under my control, never completely up to me, but my own thoughts and actions are, at least the voluntary ones. Cus would stress to Mike how he could embrace and cope with the anxiety posed by an unpredictable threat, assuring himself that he was extremely prepared for the fight, allowing rationale to calm his nerves and knowing that he had left little to chance and exercised some control over the outcome to a degree. He could not control the external factors like the refereeing or judging, yet he had a complete monopoly over his own actions in the ring. When you watch footage of Tyson before many of his major fights, he seemed far cooler, calmer and more collected than basically all his opponents, and I certainly feel the dichotomy of control principle played a pivotal role. I don't know anything about that. I don't know nothing about numbers. I just know what I can do. How yeah, I get bored everywhere in life. 
but you have to think I have boxing and just like boxing when the boxing's evolved you can get you can never get bored like some people they can make love have sex all day and they never get bored and that's how boxing is with me I just love the box more so now than I did when I first started out and I was I was, a little, I was just a fanatic when I first started out Cus persistently reiterated the value of dedication he strongly believed that if an individual wanted to make it to the summit, he had to refrain from wasting energy on activities that did not contribute to the long-term goal. Mike's dedication to the sport could be deemed a borderline obsession, with him training multiple times a day and frequently studying former greats from bygone eras. As Marcus Aurelius repeated in Meditations, there are those who love several arts and exhaust themselves working at them, unwashed and without food. But you value your own nature less than the turner values the turning art, or the dancer the dancing art, or the lover of money values his money. This neurotic fixation would propel Mike to the summit. One slightly less known element of Customato's philosophy is the emphasis he placed on believing in destiny. He constantly discussed historical figures with Mike whilst at the dinner table, particularly renowned conquerors, in order to instill an unwavering belief within Tyson of his own greatness and ability. This inspired Mike to emulate these figures, leaving a mark on the sport of boxing and a lasting legacy. Did you ever think that maybe you were born in the wrong time? That maybe if you were born in the times of Alexander the Great, you would also be a conqueror? No. I am a conqueror now because I've conquered myself and my demons. Mm. Are you going to be heavyweight champion one day? Excuse me, say which one? Are you going to be heavyweight champion one day? Most definitely. As good as I know, Tuesday follow Monday. Really? Yeah. D'Amato once stated, the man who has the confidence that his ability will not be denied, especially when you know what your ability is, nobody can con you. This doctrine is heavily reflected in the inspiring words of Aurelius as he wrote, where we are able to get profit by means of an activity which is successful and proceeds according to our constitution, no harm is to be suspected. Mike genuinely believed he was untouchable in the ring as he was made for boxing, a formidable mindset for sure. I was going to rip his heart out. I'm the best ever. I'm the most brutal and vicious and most ruthless champion there's ever been. There's no one can stop me. Lynx is a conqueror. No, I'm Alexander. He's no Alexander. I'm the best ever. There's never been anybody as ruthless. I'm Sonny Liston. I'm Jack Dempsey. There's no one like me. I'm from Nairclaw. There's no one that can match me. It's common knowledge that, when Cus decided to choose Mike as his student, he was a troubled kid who lashed out at the world. He was not able to repress the anger burning within, and one of the original aims of Cuss was to channel this aggression into a meaningful avenue. As the mentor noted, I believe a man is a professional when he can do what needs to be done no matter how he feels within. A key component of Stoicism is that outward anger transforms one's very character, degrading us and harming us more deeply than any external events ever could. In the early stages of his career, Mike refined the ability to suppress his fiery aggression, perhaps best encompassed by his fight against Sphinx. You go to each other's dressing room to check the wraps and the gloves and so forth. I go in and I think I'm going to rattle the kid, because he's under a lot of pressure. At the time, Jim Jacobs, the closest guy to him, had died right on the verge of this happening. He was in the, the mix with Robin Givens. Don King is trying to pull him away from Kate. I'm in the dressing room with Tyson, and I'm looking to rattle this guy. I walk in, he's punching holes in the wall. I'm like to myself, oh no. This guy's getting ready to fight my guy, my little guy. In spite of the difficulties outside the ring, the intrigues, deaths, and tribulations, Tyson had to compose himself and head to the ring for his biggest fight to date channel his anger, yet remain calm. As previously discussed, many external ongoings were out of his control, but as Stoics preach, only give true thought to that under your own purview. Tyson had a job to do, and he would execute it perfectly, delivering a devastating first round knockout. He dictated the outcome, regardless of the anger and pain he was feeling. Yeah, he's talking about my character and my discipline, and he, I didn't know what discipline was, so he explained to that. Discipline is doing what you hate to do, but do it like you love it. Mike, did you love him or you were afraid of him? 
Both. Really? Yeah. Both. How did you reconcile that? Loving him and being afraid of him. How do you reconcile that? You just, you, you're his slave. If he told me to kill you, I would kill you. Unfortunately, on the 4th of November 1985, Constantine Customato passed away. He therefore never witnessed his protege winning his first world title just over a year later. The passing obviously hurt Tyson massively, as Cus had been more than just a boxing coach to him. A best friend, a father figure, his saviour. Many of the principles instilled in Mike by Cus came directly from the stoicism forwarded by Marcus Aurelius, which certainly played a pivotal role in his rise to glory. The tragedy of the latter stages of Mike's career was horrific to watch, as he succumbed to many evils, leading many to postulate that, if Cus had remained alive for that period, Mike would have had an unblemished career, regulating his emotions far better. He would have been undeniably crowned as the greatest of all time. But the cruel twist of fate of an untimely death has robbed us of one of sport's biggest what ifs. Thank you for watching, and please leave a like and share this video with your friends if you enjoyed. Because I believe that a person dies when they no longer want to live. But I have a reason with Mike here, and he gives me the motivation. I will stay alive, and I will watch him become a success because I will not leave until that happens.